Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. What could this bee craft mean? Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, okay. Go craft me a some good cereal. Just like that. Right there. What? Hello and welcome to the Crab Man. Crab Man Show. What? What could it be, Crab Man? There's only one way to find out, but let's get creative with it. Major big time special shout out to my buddy Jason Parnell. Thank you so much. Craft Man has had this treasure right here for quite a while and I've just been aching for some kind of way, some reason to show it to you. By the way, I will never use that to open a package again, really. You know, this is a work of art. You know, I didn't want to be disrespectful, but I said, you know, I know that thing could open a package and so it sure did, but it's retired now, Jason, so don't worry about that, all right? But man, Jason, thank you so much. But back to our package. What's in the box? That's right. Looks like we might be fixing to have some laser cutting capabilities. I'm slightly nervous for two reasons. One, I've never cut or engraved anything with a laser. Two, this particular unit has 20 watts of laser power. I have seen reports that it can cut uh, thicker materials like three quarter inch pan. And it has an air assist. From what I've read, that should help reduce the scorch marks and the burn marks. Everything is very well packaged to the point where it might be easy to miss something. So I make sure you look through all the little nooks and crannies. So that's what it looks like when it's all laid up. Shop, baby. Are you upset? Shop, baby. Don't pretend like you're sleeping. Everybody just saw you moving. Anyway, let's put this together. And the first step to that is usually step one. Look out for this little connector piece right here. Uh, you don't want to slide that across your workbench and uh, break that little connector off of there. And we just gonna work around it from corner to corner. You want to make sure that it slides smooth. So we're going to loosen it, all right. Loosen the other side, all right. And check the speed. Now we get to install the belt. We lay the belts with the teeth facing down, which is gonna make more sense in a minute. 
the belt weaves under the first roller, connects with the geared side of the shaft, then weaves back under the second roller. A nut and a set screw keep the belts in place. And it's just a repeat of the process for the other side. And we're just going to check it and make sure we got enough slack in it. Let's go ahead and slide the cutting mat out of the way. I don't want to risk cutting it. Uh, and besides, cutting into things with certain plastics like PVC can release toxic fumes. What sets this unit apart from others is it uses a stack of four diode lasers orientated vertically. Another thing I like is that you can plug a USB in and use it without a computer being connected. All right, so we got it put together and we are ready to cut something. And I thought it was supposed to come with some sample files. It took me a minute to look. Here's where I found them right here. And if you see Chinese, press the bottom button, bottom again, then English, then back and back. Now we press carve, which takes us to our main controls. We can move the laser module in both the X and Y direction. I would like to try cutting this little piece of sample plywood they sent. Uh, the only CNC uh, type of thing I've ever done was with a router, but I'm assuming we're gonna have to either mark a center point or either use a corner reference or something for, you know, the laser to know where to begin. But we only have a metal, uh, uh, what they call a giveaway cutting mat. I don't have a honeycomb, which would be better. I've never done laser cutting before, but I read up on it enough to know that basically with something like this, uh, the back of your project might get scorched, all right? So maybe we can elevate it a little bit. But focusing the laser is just a simple task of putting in a little shim and lowering the laser module down until it's flush and remove the focusing bracket, you know. I don't know, maybe. The next important step is we need to tell the laser where the center mark is. And we just move it, move it, move it. And you can even turn it to finer increments and move it, move it, nudge it. And once the little light is pointed right over our dot, we are going to hit position. And to be sure we don't cut uh, anything we're not supposed to, we press frame. That shows us an outline of everywhere it's going to cut. I like this a lot because you can see, all right, this is the only place it's going to be cut and I ain't going to go outside the bounds or mess up something. Hold up, craft man. Don't forget safety glasses. And now the moment of truth. So that is a, that's a pretty powerful uh, uh, unit right there. Look at the. And that's when we realized we forgot to turn on the air assist. I'll talk about this more in a minute. But look at this thing cutting. To be honest, I expected it to be moving a lot slower. 
Uh, but it zipped right on out. We forgot to turn the air assist on, but that turned out good because now I can show you uh, what not to do. Look, see the difference between, that's when the air assist was not running, and then look all the way over here. Look how fan that is. Yep. That's the power of the air assist keeping it cool. Look, see. Yep. Now let's do an engraving using this butterfly sample. First, we got to set a position. This tells the laser where to begin. Usually the center or the corner, depending on how it was set up. Next, we push frame. The frame function is so valuable because it visually outlines and shows you exactly where it's gonna be cutting. And this time, we remember to turn on the air assist. The laser is running at a lower power according to how it was set in the file on the computer. From what I gather so far with lasers, the difference between cutting and engraving comes down to speed and power. So for engraving, you need either less power or, or more speed. Also, I should have taped it down. You know, it's running crooked because the puppy dog cuts out. It don't matter if it's just a little bit off, but if you're doing something like that, you want to line it up. But look at the finicity of detail there. Look at that. That's just a test sample. And instead of cutting cardboard or cardstock, I jumped right into a thick piece of plywood and decided to run a material test which is basically a grid that just shows you varying speeds and powers and what the effect is on that material, which shows you if you want to cut through a material or engrave to a certain darkness, then these are the settings you should use for that material. Your main variables are speed and power. You can also factor in number of passes, which becomes important when cutting through thick materials. As soon as I saw how fast the laser was moving, I realized I should have used lower speed values or something, because I'm not giving it nearly enough time to cut. After a phone call with my buddy Tinu, thank you Tinu, I decided to keep it simple and set up a test circle, made sure the wood was set, and whipped the computer hook straight to the laser via USB. I started cutting me a circle. Now I feel like it's moving at cutting speed, don't you think? Look at it. Without changing anything, I did the exact same step again, keeping the same setting. I'm a little concerned about running the laser at 100%, so I'm keeping it lower and I'm uh, running it slow. All right. Now we're starting to see what it looks like uh, the laser's making it through the wood. Look at that. I'm not 100% sure if it cut through. Uh, but let's just try this. That's what I'm talking about right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is substantial. But I was still thinking about that test from earlier. What if I ain't got something set right? I did a quick internet search and guess what it is? Atom Stack X20 users with Lightburn often have to change this one special parameter, the S value max. I read that this should be set to 1000, which made me nervous. Like I'm, am I feeling to blast a hole through my workbench? I don't know, but sure enough, our S value max is 255. So let's change it. And Let's try Buku materials. Y'all know you want to with a custom steady crafting logo. 
Lightburn software is pretty easy to use, although it looks complicated. You basically assign your lines different colors, and each color has its own setting. And we can even run a little preview. The black lines are cut lines, and I like to move the cut line down to the last step. That way, we can do our engraving, be sure it looks all right, and then come back and run the final cutting pass. By the way, I never would have thought to try denim, blue jean material. That's pretty neat right there. I got the idea to try denim after looking at this very handy chart. If you're wondering how in the world to come up with different speed and power values for different material, this is how you do it. I have a link in the description. Armed with this information, I was able to engrave and cut cardstock. Leather. Walnut wood. By the way, use an enclosure, a, a fume collector. You don't want to be breathing out there. Let's at least Jerry rig something to maybe help while I'm out here trying to film it. So I ran my activated carbon filter. Hope that helps. Oh, uh, by the way, here's some wild nut from earlier. Really, really, really liking the results. Here's a thick piece of pine wood. The footage is not sped up. That's just the engraving pass, which runs like a scouted dog. You can tell it's a cutting pass when it's easing around it real slow, uh, the beam intensity and the smoke are an indication of the power. Uh-oh, the cutting pass did not go all the way through. But let's don't freak out. We can just disable the engraving pass and run the cutting pass again. And we know the next time, all we have to do is increase the power, slow it down, or add an extra cutting pass. I thought it wise to test a material I have more abundant access to. Here goes some cypress. Also widely available, though technically I think it's a grass instead of a wood, but I decided to try some bamboo. What about corrugated cardboard? The final verdict for Craftman, I'm very impressed. And very excited at the variety of materials we can use. Like this wood frame. Right after I unboxed the Atom Stack X20, me and my wife went into the city for a trip to Dollar Tree. And that's what I call Economica Materials. Anyway, let's make a box. Check out this free website my buddy Abandoned Miniatures shared with me. Thank you, Nick. Let's cut it out. Getting it dead center is not as critical for cutouts, but we definitely want to hit frame and just watch and make sure it's cutting inside the wood. And looks like it is. Lastly, let's focus the laser.
And finally, I wanted to try a new design instead of crafter in the wild. My friend David Gonzalez designed this for us. Thank you so much, David. We got stickers and t-shirts coming in. Cannot wait to release it. But the idea is, if you're out in the wild, in the world, then there's a chance, not a big chance, but a chance that you can run into another steady crafter. And it might begin a new friendship. I exported this as a bitmap, which is not the ideal way you should use a vector. But I wanted to show you that you can use trace image to convert any artwork into usable lands. You could even take a picture of a logo on a napkin and then take and then bring it in and trace the image for real. I can tell that uh, I probably should have did some fill in there. I see where it basically it interpreted my lines as two lines. You see the, uh, it's an outline, outline, but that's, I like that. And that's pretty thick right though too. Yep. Why did my camera do that? The Adam Stack X20. Thank you to Adam Stack for the opportunity to test it out. Until next time. I love y'all and keep on steady cut or steady crafting, you know what I mean?